mahalo nui no ki kono ana e Terry a me Miley a me Meliana. Mahalo nui a oko pakahi a pau no ki a hui ana aloha nui kako. O ka mua e a o ka ohana o Oivi TV. The Oivi TV crew, please stand and be recognized for one second. Amy forgot to mention one of the hats. I'm the uh, audio guy today as well. Uh, so any miscues, you guys can blame on me. Um, I'm here to talk to you about a bunch of things, but it's going to be centric around OEV TV. It's just going to take me a second or two to get there. Uh, you notice it's, uh, it's fun to be at the end of the, end of the day so that I can kind of play off of some of the things that people have said beforehand. But it's also hard because, like Rick said, a bunch of the good stuff already, as did Puakea. So uh, I'll try to say new stuff, even though I had to kind of custom tailor mine a little bit because they said all the good stuff already. Um, but uh, you also notice that people talk about mo'olelo in almost every one of these, in one way or another. Right? Anakala sat over here and spoke of a story. Right? Meliana folks talked about what they did when they were kids and how uh, stories are embedded in their art. Uh, Brandy did an amazing job of bringing stories to what I could only hope to be able to speak to one day in that eloquence. Um, and that the idea of storytelling is embedded in all of us, and certainly um, in Hawaiians. When you look at that story and you look at how it is that those stories have uh, evolved over the years, Puakea spoke to it, right? That the technology changed and Hawaiians embraced it and they can read upside down, left to right and right to left and anything that would allow them to move forward into uh, the next technology. And so it's easy to talk about how TV is that next technology, but really what you have to think about first is what happened in that time when there was this big change in Hawaii. It wasn't so much a technical change, it was who was telling the story, right? And that perspective brought about uh, the Hawaiian Renaissance. When you speak to the idea of hokulea in the 70s, it wasn't born out of a dream to reconnect Hawaiians and Tahitians again through this pathway that was once used as a freeway for canoes. It was born out of the idea that we had to disprove this idea that we floated over on rafts from South America because Hawaiians and Polynesians couldn't possibly sail into the trade winds and nor could they sail out of sight of land and find their way a thousand years before Columbus even knew that there was something on the other side of this flat planet, right? And so it was because of the people telling the stories for us that there is this big shift that we see today, that the reverberations of that follow all the way till today. And that's one of the reasons why OEV TV came to be. Now, for those of you who know uh, my parents, I come from two very strong activists. My mother is Lili Kala Kamelehiva, a professor over here. My father is Jim Anthony, who's uh, somehow on the Transportation Commission just a couple of weeks ago. Longtime activist in this community, right? So I grew up in activism. I grew up in this idea that struggle is part of life, in this idea that uh, you have to fight for what is right, whether or not it's the popular idea, whether or not it's the idea that is uh, prevalent across mainstream, but if it's the right idea, then you need to fight for it. So I grew up on a picket line. I grew up fighting for um, Stop 7-Eleven in Ka'a'ava because people felt that uh, a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week, uh, seven 24-hour-a-day store might be detrimental to the, that community, right? The brown evictions in um, Waimea, at Waimea Bay. Right? And on and on, and the right to sue, and all these things, and the kue, and, and on and on and on. And we still continue to fight to this day. Right? And so really, when I look at what we're doing with OEV TV, it's an extension of that. Because really, when you're in a battle of protest, you're trying to change someone's opinion about something. Right? You want them to see your side of the story. You want them to understand why it's important for you to say your perspective, right? And so what we're doing at OEB TV is we're trying to enlighten many, many, many folks exponentially through television, right? Using that latest technology to move forward. Um, 
But even this new technology, this uh, ability to be able to tell these stories wouldn't come until 2007 or 2008. And the reason for that is because of how fast technology is changing. I had already been in TV for about a decade. Um, I got my start actually sailing with Hokulea, uh, and they were creating a show about the voyage to Rapa Nui. And that gave me an opportunity to get training and get uh, time in camera and time editing. And after that, I started producing small shows. And um, by the time 2007 and 2008 came, I really had um, a strong foundation in what everyone was sure would be the quickest way to bankruptcy, right? <laughs> all the artists in the room, right? They all know that. Doing stuff in and around your community, right? Is that I was really interested in, and still am interested in oral histories. Uh, to date, our shop um, treats every news story, treats every documentary, treats every piece that we do as an oral history. Right? Anyone in my shop will tell you that uh, if you want to spend an extra 10 minutes with a kupuna or an extra half an hour, or if they're going to go on for an hour or two, roll the tape, and we keep everything. Right? Our hard drives at our shop are much like what Puakea spoke about today. Right? We have 160 thousand gigabytes of media at our shop, right? We're the record. We're the record for the perspective. We're the record for people who have been waiting sometimes their whole lives to talk about what they saw when they were kids, to talk about what people talked about on the stage today, right? And so uh, I would argue that we're the, the, probably the worst Band-Aid that there can be. Ideally, you want grandparent to grandchild transmission. But that's not always possible in what we see today. So for us, uh, we serve that purpose in the multitude of things that we do. And you're going to see some of these pictures. Some of these pictures uh, in the background here are from faraway places, as far as uh, Sarawa and uh, Papahana Mokuakea. But I want you to pay attention to the faces. I want you to pay attention to the young faces that um, you see in these slideshows, because those are the ones who have been empowered through what we're doing to stand up and become not only technicians, not just people who are uh, good at shooting or editing, but people who are passionate about storytelling in Hawaii. Right? We've, we started a training program at OEV TV uh, that just ended, uh, hopefully we re-up next year, for three years worth of uh, internship training, workforce development. Right? And they're not getting coffee and sweeping up the shop. They're on cameras. They're editing news packages. They're actively engaging in our community so that we have the ability to train as we go, because this can only get bigger. Boivi TV started off as a, um, actually as a dream of uh, Joan and Puhipao, Namako Ka'aina. Yeah. They've been talking about the Station for the Nation for 35 years. Yeah. Technically, it didn't work at the time. Broadcast media was uh, what they call in uh, MBA school, very high barrier to entry, right? Expensive equipment. You have to have enough content to run content 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right? It's very, very difficult to do when you don't have a station, right? But if you don't have the content, you can't have the station, and you can't have the station if you don't have the content. And so they're stuck in this catch-22 for a whole generation of time. Right? And what ended up happening was technology here at uh, Oceanic Time Warner specifically was ahead of all the other technologies in the rest of the nation. They've been the test bed because this market is just big enough, the saturation is enough here to test something, see if it breaks, and then make it work. And then once it works here, they can roll it out in the rest of the nation. Some of you have probably heard of Video On Demand, HBO On Demand. Now it's kind of a household thing. You can watch your shows when you want to watch them, right? They're sitting there. You can watch a whole series of uh, Sherlock Holmes or uh, Downton Abbey or any of those shows. Um, that technology was relatively new in 2005 and 6, and by 2007, they had kind of refined it. A friend of mine came into my office one day, one of my uh, very dear uh, photography friends, Bo Kuizan, came in and he says, hey, this would be perfect for the Hawaiians. And I said, oh, well, well, how come? Why? What does it do? And he says, well, you can make the content as you go. It doesn't have the same kind of ferocious appetite that 24-7 uh, TV does. So you can grow something small but still be in broadcast. Um, Luckily, the relationships that I had built as a producer allowed me entry into offices that would later be vital to the strength of OEV TV. So we went and knocked on the door at KS. A friend of mine um, who I'd worked with at KITV 
was the director of communications there. And she immediately saw the potential of something that had uh, statewide reach, that had 300,000 homes as customers, um, that would have a Hawaiian perspective and be a place where all of this content could come together in one place. Right? We took uh, the $9 billion trust in tow and we went to go talk to Oceanic. Oceanic opened their doors and they said, sure, let's try it. Simple as that. I got an email in June of 2008. Oh, OAV TV's up. And we gave them some content and they just put the channel up. They've never said no to us yet. Okay. Without any advertising, without any money, with very little content, uh, we stood this station up because a lot of passionate people believed in the idea. Right. Since then, we've gone through three iterations. We see a couple hundred thousand views a month. And we've grown this pie of what we're trying to do in all kind of different shapes and ways. We've trained a bunch of new media makers who would have not existed had it not been for a channel. We've uh, joined an international organization of which we are the smallest group of indigenous media makers around the planet. Whether you want to talk about uh, the Sami in Norway, the Maori in Aotearoa, the Taiwanese, they all have native languages and native cultures that they're trying to preserve. And that's really the intent of this, okay? You're gonna see a handful more speakers after me, and you saw a bunch before me, and everybody who stood on this stage, uh, save two, as far as I can tell, we've done stories on, right? But Brandy and Anakala will be, uh, will be chasing you guys down as well, <laughs> okay? But what does that mean for us? What does that do for us? How does this work as a, as a tool for all of you? It does a bunch of things. Uh, we're talking about how it is that we engage our community, not the way we would like to engage our community 30 years ago, but how our community engages today. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, social media, constantly on Keone back there. How are we gonna engage our community? How is it that we're gonna get these pieces for people to see? Well, what we're doing is we're slowly shifting the paradigm as a positive, reflective mirror in media for ourselves. Right? I think everyone can agree that that's needed. How is it that we engage these kids to feel good about themselves, to see brown faces on television that didn't just murder somebody or rape somebody or do something bad that the news is gonna cover? Right? When do you see the news covering something good that a Hawaiian did, another Hawaiian PhD, an artist gets an award? Right? Mamo being uh, you know, this great place to get all these stories. The first year out, Amy referenced it. We, uh, we shot like 15 stories at Mamo over the first weekend, right? Because there's all these things that Hawaiians are celebrating and they're happy about it and they're engaged and it shows that our community is vibrant. But what was the key difference? It wasn't the technology, it was the people telling the stories. And that to me is uh, the most important thing, that if we're gonna do this and we're going to move forward and we're going to engage our community and we're going to grow, it has to be on our terms with our perspective. Because if it is, then we cannot help but succeed. So, mahalo nuya o ko pakahiya pao na keela.